Good morning, everybody. I am making this uh, presentation on behalf of uh, the Department of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. Uh, you may know that uh, India has uh, made very significant progress in information technology, in software, etc. So the government, in its wisdom, decided that uh, you know there is, it's the time to focus on electronics very seriously, and therefore the department has been renamed as the Department of Electronics and Information Technology now, with a very serious focus on electronics. This is under the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, and. Uh, becomes a very important wing and electronics will be the flagship effort of this department now. The Indian Cellular Association, a, a small introduction, Samsung is our founding member of the Indian Cellular Association. Samsung is the market leader now in India. I'll tell you a small story about Samsung. Just five years back, in January 2007, Samsung used to sell only 90,000 mobile phones every month in India. Only 90,000. And the market leader was Nokia, which was selling more than 5 million mobile phones. I am telling you this small story so that you understand how Korean companies are making rapid strides in India. Today, Samsung is the market leader in India with a very big manufacturing facility. They, the turnover of Samsung in mobile phones is almost 400 million every month. It's a very, very big, uh, a very big uh, market for Samsung. Similarly, LG has very large plants in India encompassing home appliances, consumer electronics, and mobile phones. Mr. Saxena briefly explained what is the problem India is foreseeing if we do not overcome this gap of demand and manufacturing. We will have a very serious gap, trade gap, of imports versus what the country is going to consume as electronics. Therefore, three flagship policies the department, the Ministry of Communication and IT started. The National Telecom Policy, the National Policy on Electronics, and the National Policy on Information Technology. Three big policies. The National Telecom Policy has already been approved by the Cabinet, which is the supreme body of decision-making in India. The National Policy on Electronics is going to be finalized by the Cabinet. And it has a very lofty vision which is that we will create a competitive, globally competitive electronics design and manufacturing industry to meet first India's needs, which are going to be 400 billion, and to serve the international market. Let me tell you something. As I told you, Samsung, LG have very large facilities in India. They find the Indian manufacturing environment very conducive. Samsung also has very significant research and development facilities in India, which they are scaling up by almost three times now. And there are a lot of Indian engineers who are working in Samsung India, in Samsung Korea, uh, who work for the Indian operations also. The most important uh, aspect of the national policy on electronics is that we want to create a chip design and embedded software industry, which is the basic value add in electronics that 
famous report of Apple which said that the iPhone 5 will add half percent to US GDP must be vivid in everybody's mind. That is the value add which Apple is able to bring about on top of a mobile phone over its bill of material. So we want to have a strong chip design and embedded software industry. So there are more than 50 initiatives in this policy of electronics which we are addressing one by one. Four hundred billion dollars is what we expect the demand for electronics to be in India in 2020. That is the hunger for electronics in India. Every Indian wants to own a mobile phone. Every family wants to have a television and the ecosystem with it, set-top box, etc. because we are moving to a digital broadcasting industry. Every Indian child wants to get educated and he needs the tools for that. Every Indian business, which is more than 120 million businesses, wants to use electronics and information technology. I said 50 initiatives, but these are the chief initiatives, which is the first is the semiconductor water fab. The cabinet of India has approved two fabs which we will build. It's not a plan only on paper. We will build these fabs and $5 billion has been approved by Government of India to support these two fabs. These fabs, uh, the expressions of interest have come from all the global companies. Korea has not participated so aggressively. We hope and we are very confident in the second round after the SIPS is introduced, there will be strong participation from Korea also. The second big policy is the modified SIPS, Special Investment Promotion Scheme. I'll tell you some more details about this later. The third big policy is the manufacturing parks, the electronic manufacturing parks, which are both brownfield and greenfield. So it is not as if we are going to ignore the past investments of Samsung and LG and Nokia. Those will be configured in the new policies and in the new parks some very attractive incentives are being given. The preferential market access which is WTO compliant has also been approved by the cabinet of India which is that 30% of India's government and government supported buying of electronics will be reserved for products made in India. And then there are two important skill development initiatives. And last is the Electronic Development Fund, which I'll come to in detail later. The next few slides I'll explain to you and try to give you the idea of what is the size of each vertical out of those 400 billion dollars market, what is, how is it broken down? We estimate that the semiconductor design market will be 60 to 80 billion dollars in India. We already have a considerable design industry in India of about 6 billion dollars. India has, is a software powerhouse. We are very strong in the design we are designing for other people in the world. As I told you, Samsung has a very big design and R&D facility in India. Telecom equipment is a very large industry in India, mostly serviced by exports 
and the demand last year was 11 billion dollars we are estimating a demand of 30 billion 34 billion dollars on the riding on our basic growth of 3g and 4g which obviously uh, is rolling out at the moment broadband is the third biggest uh, driver of the telecom equipment industry and we estimate that we will have 600 million connections on broadband by 2020. There are two large projects that is the NOFN where every village panchayat there are 600,000 villages in India out of which 270,000 villages have something called the panchayat which is like a small government in each village. Democracy has very deep roots in India uh, right down to the village level and we are through the USO fund which is currently a five billion dollar fund going to take fiber to each village panchayat. Uh, this is a project which is uh, rolled out Three pilots have already started in the Northeast, in Rajasthan and in Andhra Pradesh. And now there is a, a rollout in the next two years where every village panchayat, 276,000 villages will be connected by fiber. And the National Knowledge Network where gigabyte connectivity is being given to the 15,000 universities and colleges of India. This project is also underway. Of course, the, the hero of the electronic demand in India are mobile phones, mobile tablets. And when I said that India is not so strong in electronic manufacturing, I like to add here that the world's largest mobile phone factory is in India, which is exporting to 100 countries. This is the Nokia factory in Chennai, very close to the Hyundai factory. Chennai, Sri Pramadur is, is a, a very big Korean hub where thousands of uh, uh, you know, uh, Korean products are being produced, including there is a Samsung appliances factory close to this factory. This is the single largest mobile phone manufacturing facility in the world. And this special economic zone is employing more than 50,000 people in an area of 200 acres. And the experience of Nokia has been, and the mobile phone manufacturing industry has been, that India is very competitive, the costs are lower than China and the efficiency is better than China. So I think if a stamp of approval is required for India's manufacturing competitiveness, the world's largest mobile factory has put that stamp on India's competitiveness. What is driving the demand for mobile phones? As I told you, the consumer psychology that we, every Indian wants to be empowered with a mobile phone. So when we are estimating 700 million mobile phones by the year 2020, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a dream because this year there is a demand for 200 mobile phones every month consistently we are selling 16 million mobile phones and uh, we are moving to a very large tablet market also which I will explain in the next few slides. India's desire and the government of India's desire to have digital broadcasting is has been finally decided. It, it took us long time, 10 years to address this. So every major city will now move to 
electronic which is uh, digital broadcasting and this brings out a huge market for set top boxes of more than 200 million units automotive electronics uh, i i don't know much about this subject i think you uh, korea knows this subject much better than us and we are very keen that korea participates in this vertical of the electronic industry uh, with its tremendous uh, competency and experience in this sector uh, medical electronics here i i like to give a a, a very a good development uh, which is been developed from the uh, the cdac which is a government uh, research institute which is a hearing aid Uh, a very low cost hearing aid for the emerging world and india can license this uh, to uh, even countries like korea which can become manufacturing powerhouses for this low cost uh, unit for the rest of the emerging world i came to computers now which is uh, as i told you uh, while the tablets have gone into the mobile sector we Uh, have a very large SME and a corporate sector and an education sector where we estimate that the demand for laptops and desktops is about 34 billion dollars by 2020. So this is another very large uh, segment, and the governments are trying to empower the people by giving subsidized uh, computers in various uh, states. LED is another market. which we, india is aggressively trying to develop we have formed a led association in india which is uh, quite vibrant now uh, every of uh, these verticals including verticals like lithium ion we are going ahead and forming associations forums who will you know aggregate uh, all the aspirations and try to give leadership to that particular vertical and uh, industry not only gujarat every state government is currently working on uh, developing this industry andhra pradesh haryana punjab have developed uh, you know announced their policies and also given the scheme of uh, the electronic manufacturing cluster park Uh, Gujarat under the leadership of Mr Ravi Saxena is working on a policy uh, which will be a robust strong policy uh, and uh, when Gujarat gets its act together they run faster than every other state in the country uh, why i am here is that it's not because of my great friendship with Mr Saxena only after all i am a businessman i want to spend my time uh, in a very optimized manner gujarat is the number one state in a competitiveness study which we did with kpmg on 43 parameters of investment uh, so it was a clear leader in the competitiveness study among all states of india so it's only the policy which is left now and they will have their electronic manufacturing cluster parks announced very soon i think gujarat will be a great destination for electronic manufacturing in the future uh i like to give you a small uh, uh idea on other initiatives uh, timelines i think this uh, presentation is going to be circulated so you will get an idea we have uh, become the dumping ground for uh, cheap chinese products and we have realized that you see when i told you that samsung is the market leader but the cheap chinese phones because uh, there's a large population in india which is uh, you know not literate at the moment and do not understand uh, the brands so there is mass scale copying and you know these cheap chinese products are floating around in the market so we have decided that we'll have mandatory standards for like all electronic products which are getting rolled out at the moment 
I'll give you an example of lithium ion batteries where there is mass scale import from China and Samsung was very concerned about this, Samsung SDI. So last year, Mr. Park, uh, the CEO of uh, Samsung SDI came to India. We promised him that we will clean up this ecosystem, not for only for the sake of Samsung and LG chemicals, but also for the sake of the citizens of India. Within nine months, we have come out with mandatory standards for lithium ion rechargeable portable batteries and you will find a very large market opening up for the Korean companies now in India because the quality standards have moved up to a certain level. How are we going to have people ready to support you in the manufacturing of these products and the design of these products. The Prime Minister of India about three years back announced the National Skill Development Corporation and it has an ambitious target of providing skills to 750 million Indians by 2022. So the target is that by the age of 75, India uh, India is, uh, was born as a free country in 1947. On the same day, 15th August, Korea is, is two years senior to us uh, in that way. So. 750 million at the age of 75 is the target which the Prime Minister has uh, given and we have two initiatives in the sector skill, two sector skill councils. The telecom sector skill council where Samsung is one of the founding members of the sector skill council. We have signed the term sheet with the government of India to train 5 million people by 2020. And 5 million people, we, we have a shortfall of all, we have about 700,000 trained people at the moment. So we have to do a seven times bigger exercise than what it is there now. So which means that creating 25,000 trainers, about four, 500 mil, uh, you know, uh, training companies. So that is another big opportunity for Korean companies to which are in training to come to India and set up training companies. These training companies will be in manufacturing, repair, etc. the entire ecosystem. There are 400 job roles which we have identified in telecom. Uh, for example, base station management is uh, one of the job roles. This is a big opportunity which is there uh, for Korean companies to come in and develop training. Uh, similarly, a sector skill council is being developed for electronics uh, manufacturing, which is uh, from computers, telecom equipment, etc. I have already uh, given you some details about the big government procurement projects, uh, including the NOFN, NKN, the National E-Governance Plan, uh, the LED projects and the set-top boxes. So are these only plans or are these policies which are firmly on the ground, which have the seal of the approval of the highest body in the government of India, which is the cabinet of India? Well, all these policies, almost all these policies now have that seal of uh, the cabinet. In the modified SIPs, which is the Special Investment Promotion Scheme, if you invest $100 million in Gujarat or any other state in India, uh, you will get $20 million to $25 million back depending on which environment you are in, whether you are in SEZ or non-SEZ. So this is a cash back from the Government of India. 
it's a very significant uh, incentive which is quite unprecedented anywhere in the world and do we have the capacity to give it well uh, 10000 crores which is 2 billion dollars has already been set aside by the cabinet of india for this incentive to be given so the money is available the only thing is that a three year time window is there whoever comes and invests in the next three years or starts investing in the next three years he will be entitled for this incentive and believe me this incentive is the icing on the cake because already india has very competitive environment for manufacturing this is an added advantage over that in the electronic manufacturing cluster parks again which has the stamp of the cabinet of india 50% of the development cost of the cluster will be given as an incentive to the developer which is up to 50 crore rupees for every 100 acres of land but not limited to that i mean we envisage a very large korean cluster in fact three korean clusters are envisaged in india from 500 to 1000 acres so let's say if a 1000 acre cluster is put up the incentive to the developer can go up to as high as 100 million dollars for mitigating his cost of investment here there is one condition that the developer has to come in as a special purpose vehicle as we have done in the case of nokia in chennai the special ve- purpose vehicle is a non profit body which is for development of the industrial park and then the units can come into this park for development and establishment of their industrial units the electronic development fund is inspired by korea uh and its tremendous strides in uh, research and development in electronics it's a billion dollar fund it's currently at the government of india level this fund will spin off daughter funds and i am sure gujarat government will uh, also develop one of its funds in partnership with financial institutions and will have a very speedy uh, uh, process of clearing and giving grants to entrepreneurs for the same there is one caveat however in this this money can only be given to indian companies so how korea can benefit out of it is that if you farm out your development to indian companies which is happening those indian companies can avail of this uh, grant it is not limited to project size it can be even 100% grant so if there is a project of a million dollars somebody wants to develop a good technology he can get even 100% grant out of this fund or out of one of the daughter funds just to give you a snapshot of how the major venture capital funds are getting interested walden has signed up a fund of 100 million us dollars for this sector so we are hoping that korea also participates in it through its various companies and funds to develop the electronic development fund also i in the end i just want to say one thing uh, politically strategically economically at the industry and trade level we are very familiar with korea uh, especially the electronic industry 
the mobile phone industry, mobile equipment industry is very familiar with Korea and has deep respect for what the Korean companies have been able to achieve. We have provided complete free market access of the large Indian market to Korean companies without any conditions. Unlike other countries which have made it conditional that you will invest so much or you will have to export 50 percent or you have to have the such and such number of employees from that particular country. There is no condition like that. India is completely free. Your CEO can be from Korea. Your driver can also be from Korea. Your receptionist can be from Korea. Your R&D chief can be from Korea. It's a completely free market. There is no restriction. There is no restriction on sending the capital out of India. There is no restriction that you have to go to only one particular state or to a zone. So it's a very free environment and a very competitive environment. And of course, these incentives are the icing on the cake. So I think the, it's a very, very good opportunity uh, that you come invest in India and utilize all these wonderful incentives which the government of India and now the government of Gujarat is coming out with its policy. It's a great opportunity to come and invest in Gujarat and India. Thank you.